I tried many times in my 20s to get sober. I would think of my mom and I would do my best to quit on my own. Each time I tried, I would make it to the one year mark and start drinking again, every time thinking it would be different. During my early 20s, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia. There were times when I couldn't get out of bed or I would end up in the hospital. On days when I felt better, I would pop pain pills and go drinking. I started going to the clubs on my own because Rob became extremely jealous. When I started to feel suffocated, I would take off on him to drink and cheat. My disease made me feel undesirable and unwanted. When I researched rheumatoid arthritis online and saw pictures of what it looked like, I would get depressed thinking of how I would become deformed and confined to a wheelchair and no one would want me. I would get sloppy drunk, end up in cars and alleys with strangers, and sometimes I would end up in the back of a cop car and brought home. Twice during those days, I was mistaken for a prostitute. Once when I was walking by myself, I got chased by a man who told me he wanted an hour. The second time was at a hotel party with a guy who wanted me to meet up with his well-off white friends. They asked him if I was an ethnic. Both times I stereotyped. I was oblivious about who I surrounded myself with. My best friend at the time, Thomas, was heavily involved in the partying lifestyle, but I didn't pay attention to it because he kept me away from it. I was so self-involved that I didn't even look around to see what was happening. I had met Thomas at a fitness center that we both went to. Eventually, I started working at the fitness center and he would visit me while I was working. When I asked Thomas what he did for work, he told me he was an art dealer. Rob had grown up with a dad who was a drug dealer and pimp, so he laughed at me when I told him this. He told me that art dealers don't drive Escalades like that or hang out with friends who get flown into parties in a helicopter. I was hanging out with people who were involved in organized crime, but I had no fear and didn't think about my well-being or safety because I didn't think I was at risk. There were times when I would be around hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars worth of drugs and money and people who were enforcers and dealers. I sat at the table with people who were so high up they wouldn't even touch the money or drugs. Thomas and I would often sit off to the side in the club and have some deeply intense conversations. I knew he was a brilliant man. We were both living in extremely dark places and really knew nothing about each other. We told each other stories about our lives, but we never talked about how we felt about it or how it affected us. Sometimes he would start to ask me questions about why I was so guarded and we would get into arguments when he tried to push me out of my comfort zone. 